that song. Jesus is exalted. Here we go. Jesus is exalted. I don't mean continue in that attitude. I'm going to sing out that song. I'm a friend of God. Put your hands together this evening. Come on. Here we go. Who am I that you are mindful of me? That you hear me when I call. Is it true that you are thinking? of me, how you love me, it's amazing, it's amazing, who am I that you are mindful of me, that you hear me when I call?
out that song. All right, God, put your hands together this evening, church. Come on. Continue, get into an attitude of worship, sing out that song in totalidad a ti. En totalidad a ti. Rindo alma y corazón. No tengo nada más que dar. me 
Church, why don't we continue in that attitude? Let's go ahead and sing out that song, No Longer Slaves. Why don't you go ahead and lift up your hands? Get a hold of Jesus Christ this evening. Here we go. You unravel me with a melody. You surround me with song of deliverance from my enemies till all my fears are gone. I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am
to come before the living God of this evening church in prayer uh, in unity this evening praying uh, there are a number of people that are sick in body within our church uh, just pray God's hand of healing and strength upon them uh, many needs here tonight I'm sure we all have our own personal needs this evening but tonight church I want us to pray for the Lopez's in this farewell service uh, pray for Pastor Victor sister Jessica for Ugo that God would overshadow them as they go into this next chapter of their lives. That God would help the church there in La Paz. That everything uh, would uh, be smooth in that transition. Uh, let's believe God tonight, church. Uh, this is what we're about. This is what we do. We send out our best. Uh, we disciple couples. We send them out uh, to go and reach the lost. Tonight, let's pray that God would anoint Pastor Lopez uh, as he preaches this evening. Uh, let's believe God together, church. Let's lift our hands. Uh, Let's lift our voice, and as we do, our brother Omar is going to lift us in prayer this evening. Help me pray tonight. Father, we thank you this evening, God, for your wonderful presence in this place. God, we lift up every need, and we lift up the Lopez family right now, Lord. Oh, Father God, we thank you, Lord, for this day, Father God. Lord, we thank you for all that you're doing and all that you're about to do, Father God. Lord, we pray, Lord, that you move upon every spoken and unspoken prayer in this place, Father God. Lord, we lift up, Father God, Pastor Victor and his family, Lord, as they go to La Paz, Bolivia, Father God. We pray for supernatural breakthrough, Father God. We pray for revival upon our nation, upon our world, Father God. Lord, we pray, Father God, you keep moving, Father God, upon each and every person in this place, Father God. Lord, using us as a vessel for your kingdom, Father God. Taking, Father God, yes, the call, Father God, to minister your word. Father God, to spur the good news, Father God. Lord, we pray, Father God, you keep moving, Father God. We pray all this in your Holy Son's name, Jesus Christ. Amen. God bless you, church. Hallelujah, church. As you greet one another, it's good to sing out that song. I got my mind made up. Here we go. I've got my mind made up to serve the Lord. I've got my mind made up. Good evening, everyone. My name is Leslie, and I would like to welcome you back to our evening service. 
If you are watching online or here in person, we are so glad you're here. Acompáñenos para nuestro servicio de español ese jueves a las 7 de la noche. Todos son bienvenidos. Come and join us for Bible study this Friday at 7.30 p.m. This is the perfect time to learn more about your Bible, ask questions, and fellowship with one another. If you don't have a Bible study and would like to attend one, there's a sheet located in the back of the sanctuary with names and locations. We hope to see you there. Join us this Saturday for a 10 a.m. outreach, then return with us at 8 p.m. for a live concert. Spend your Saturday night with live music, great dramas, and fantastic food. This is a great way to spend time with family and friends. Don't miss out on this fun event. This ends our announcements. If you missed out on any information, you can log on to our website at thedormacallan.com, or you can download our app. Thank you once again for joining us this week, and we hope to see you soon. Good to have everyone here this midweek service. Uh, we are glad that you joined us. Today is uh, the farewell service for the Lopez's, and uh, afterwards uh, we will be having cake and punch in the um, concert hall. And so if you could stay, you want to take some pictures with them before they, they leave, that's going to be immediately after service. Amen. And so that's all that we have in the way of announcements. Uh, we are going to receive the offering, amen, for the Lord's house. You know, the other day um, I was passing by and I looked over the building and there was a rainbow. Um, you know, and I, I just couldn't help. You know, if you ever doubt God's faithfulness, um, every time I'm driving in to this building it just absolutely blows me away it's still for me it's still unbelievable it, it just it's shocking and uh, you know when I passed by the other day and I saw the rainbow I couldn't help but think of the many years that you kept hearing about this day you know about this uh, one day having your own property one day uh, being a, a conference one day you know and here we are and all it proves is that God is faithful. He keeps his promises, amen. Timing is everything with God. And that's why it's important, amen, to be faithful because he is faithful, amen. I'm going to ask you to just, you know, sometimes you just have to take a couple of steps back and just thank God for everything, the good and the bad. You know, no one likes to go through the bad seasons, but when you look back, and you see what God has done in them, it's like, okay, it makes sense. They're still not fun. It doesn't matter whether they make sense now or not. But God is faithful, amen. That's what I'm trying to say. Trust him. Trust him with your life. Trust him with your finances. Trust him with your everything. And he'll never let you down, amen. Let's bow our heads. We're going to pray. I'm going to have Brother Scoe. He's going to bless the offering. Amen. Let's continue to give and be faithful in everything that God has entrusted us with. Amen. Hallelujah. Church, as you're liberal this evening, I'm going to sing out that song. I've got my mind made up. Here we go. I've got my mind made up to serve the Lord. I've got my mind.
I did want to just introduce him, uh, Pastor Lopez, in his last service. You know, David was able to accomplish a lot of things because God gave David amazing men. And God has done the same, amen, for the McAllen Church. God has given us amazing couples. And uh, amen, if you know Pastor Lopez, he is a man of excellence. He is, uh, when I think about him, I think about loyalty. I think about discipline. And I think about faithfulness. Amen. And there's very few men that convict me. <laughs> well, he's definitely one of them. His life, the way he lives it. He loves God. He's extremely, extremely disciplined. His loyalty is just absolutely, it's a, it's, it's a very, very powerful uh, gift that he has. Amen. And we're blessed to be able to raise these kind of couples. Amen. Jessica has been an incredible, incredible blessing. Uh, Ugo, amen, uh, the right arm of the children's church is getting pulled out right now. And so they're just a well-rounded family, amen. They are an incredible blessing, and it's really crazy how things work. I've had assistance since 2010, uh, you know, in, involved in my ministry. And uh, it always seems like when you start clicking with each other and you already know what the other, you know, uh, what we're thinking, we're able to just kind of just, without even communicating, we hard, you're not going to believe this, but we hardly even talked. Uh, he just knows. He pays attention and he loves this church. It's very, very evident and we're very, very blessed. Amen. It's a bitter, sweet day, but they're going to move on to the next chapter of their lives. You pray, amen, for them. We're going to believe God. I've asked them to minister this last night. Amen. Hallelujah. Hi, it's going to be hard for me. <laughs> this wasn't supposed to happen. Um, I wasn't expecting that from Pastor. to preach. <laughs> uh, for, uh, let's open our Bibles to Exodus chapter 3. I'll give you the scripture first as uh, I get ready to preach. Amen. It seems like, a, uh, like I'm preaching my last sermon, but not really. <laughs> not really. Uh, Exodus chapter 3. Uh, I was uh, maybe supposed to cry later on, right? But not right now. And uh, <laughs> Uh, just give me a minute, <laughs> give me a minute to say, get my bearings going. <clears throat> First of all, on behalf of our, my family, Jessica, our son. It's crazy. <laughs> not right. I'm supposed to be already getting into this, the word, amen. But on behalf of our family, my wife and I and Ugo, we want to thank Pastor. This is Nora. For putting up with, putting up mostly with me. Amen. My wife, she's a different sermon. Uh, but she's good. Amen. I'm, I'm the one that's, he had to, like Pastor said, you know, uh, we don't talk a lot. Can 
Palidas. <laughs> we don't talk a lot, but I try to be the, the best assistant I could. And I, I just hope I, I've served you too well, I served you well uh, as a church, amen, as my brothers and sisters. I thank you for giving me that opportunity to serve you, to walk into your life, even though I know you were busy and I would walk by and I would interrupt, and it was with a purpose, <laughs> to get you out of your shell, amen, and, uh, and it helped me, and I hope it helped you, and um, uh, just thank you guys for everything. Amen. So uh, Exodus chapter 3, verses 1 through 4, we're going to see there the word of God. Thank you once again, Michael, and I love you. And I, you need to pray for us a lot. Amen. You need to pray for us a lot. Amen. For me, that I don't go crazy. <laughs> but it'll be good. It'll be good. Amen. Um, so Exodus chapter 3, verses 1 through 4. Uh, this sermon was inspired probably a year ago, amen, uh, by the men over there at the, at the sermonizing in the mornings. And Marmaduke was saying a story about his dad. Richard Mar Marmaduke, he, he's not here. He's a little bit sick right now under the weather. And he told us a story about uh, how his dad was a uh, volunteer firefighter. I don't know which uh, city here in, 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 in the valley, amen. But he said that his dad was always ready, and he was on call. He was a volunteer. You know, there's nobody there being paid at this volunteer station. And he was always on call. He spoke about his dad having a little red flash, uh, uh, flashing light. You know, the ones that you see in the 80s movies with the police. They put the little thing on top, and they would get on the car, and woo, he would book it, amen. So uh, every time there was a fire, he jumped in his truck, put on the, uh, on the light, and he booked it to the station. He said that the problem, the problem was that sometimes there was, there was no, no one there at the station. So Marmaduke's dad had to make a decision to go or wait. There was nobody there. Those were crucial moments in the call. If he waited too long, the potential of someone dying was greater, and if he went by himself, the efficacy of the work would greatly be hindered. How many of you know, church, that today, the days in history we're living in, we are at a critical time in history. The world is a mess, and Jesus Christ is coming back, amen. The rapture can happen at any time. It can happen at any time, amen. So in the portion of Scripture we're about to read, we have Moses calling and his burning bush experience. He had a particular, Moses had a particular calling uh, to lead a nation, but this evening, we are going to look at this scripture as it can also be a, applied in a general way. We are all called to do something here in this place. I'll be ministering a sermon this evening titled, The Call. But like I said, it's not specifically a call to preach, although I'm going to throw it in for points but also a call to repentance, a call to be available for, ser for service here in church, to do something for God in these last days that we're living in. So we're going to read the scripture in Exodus chapter 3, verses 1 through 4. Uh, the background of the story is that ex uh, 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 Moses has been in the desert for 40 years. Remember, he has been running away from, e uh, he ran away from Egypt, from Pharaoh. He wanted to kill him. So he goes to the desert. He gets married over there, and he's making a life. He's comfortable. And this is where we pick it up in Exodus chapter 3, verses 1 through 4. Now Moses was sending the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian. And he led the flock to the back of the desert and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. And the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire from the midst of a bush. So he looked, excuse me, and behold, the bush was burning with fire, but the bush was not consumed. Then Moses said, I will now turn aside and see this great sight, why the bush does not burn. Verse 4, so when the Lord saw that he turned aside to look, God called to him from the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses. And he said, 
Here I am. Here I am. So let's pray this evening, church. Heavenly Father, we ask that you bring conviction upon our hearts. Father God, use me as your oracle to minister with the conviction of your Holy Ghost, Father God, in clarity this evening. Pray, Father God, you open the hearts and the minds of your people, those that you're calling tonight, Father God, to do your will. In Jesus' name we pray. And all God's people said, Amen and Amen. The call. So let's talk about that, first of all, the call. So Moses had a calling. Somehow knew that God would use him to deliver his people. And if you know the story of what happened with Moses, there was a, a period of time when he was being nursed, when he was found in the river, amen, he was taken by his, uh, by, by, he was found by Pharaoh's daughter, basically, and then the little sister Miriam comes, and, and, and he, she says, hey, I know someone who can nurse it for you, basically, and she took him, basically, from that point on, all the way to the appearance of his brothers, it was about 35 years, a period there, I would think, that we don't know about. We don't know what happened with Moses there. Hebrews 11.24, the Bible tells us. In Hebrews 11.24, by faith Moses, Moses, when he became of age, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the passing pleasures of sin. All we know, church, is that he was about 80 years old when God called him back to him. When God called, you know, he, Moses is 80 years old when he gets his burning bush experience. He's there in the desert. He's, you know, life, you might think, you know, he passed, it, passed him over. But he didn't know that God still had a plan for his life. You know, as new converts, when you come, you give your life to Christ. Many don't know what God wants from them. They, they come, they give their life, to, their life to Christ, and they have no clue, no idea what God can do in their lives, in the future of their lives. So sometimes you will need people to help you discern God's calling for, for your life. We can see this in the life of Eli and Samuel. You know the story in 1 Samuel chapter 3 that God is calling, you know, he's going to use uh, Samuel. And he calls him as he's going to bed in the temple, in the tabernacle. Samuel, Samuel, Samuel gets up. He, he goes to, to Eli. Have you called me, Master, uh, sir? No, I didn't call you. Three times this happens. And then the fourth time, the third time, Eli says, you know what? God is trying to call this guy. So he tells him in uh, 1 Samuel 3, 8, and the Lord called Samuel again the third time. So he arose and went to Eli, and he said, here I am, for you did call, for you did call me. Then Eli perceived that the Lord had called the boy. So here we have God calling Samuel audibly, but he thinks it's Eli. So Eli, a man, he has to guide him. He tells him, you know what, go and wait. And when he calls again, you say, you know what, here I am, here, here I am, Lord. What do you want me to do? Moses didn't need a man to help him discern who it was that was calling him for it. He clearly stated who he was. When God, when he, when he approached the burning bush, God revealed himself to him. In verse 6, the Bible tells us in our text, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. He understood, hey, this is God, the creator of earth, heaven and earth. When God calls, listen, when God calls, you know he has called you. You know he has something for your life. Ultimately, you will decide what you do. How will you respond? He may call you when you are at your most, most prosperous point. Maybe he's calling you right, right now that you're in comfort. Maybe he's calling you to, challenging you to leave it all and follow him, just like the rich young, young ruler. You know, the rich young ruler is a very peculiar, particular calling. He didn't call everybody to do that. In the Bible, just one person. Just leave it. Come follow me. Some of the disciples, he called, uh, they were very successful at what they did. Matthew was a tax collector. He was making money, crazy money. Luke was a physician, a doctor. Some of these fishermen that they, that he called, they were probably very prosperous. Zacchaeus, he was a chief tax collector. 
the top rata. The top of them all, amen. They would pay him. Joseph of Arimathea, wealthy man. We can talk about Nicodemus, the one that spoke to Jesus on John chapter 3 at night. He was part of the Sanhedrin. He, was, he had a high position there in the temple. You know, when God called my wife and I to follow the calling, I, I weighed the cost. My wife and I weighed the cost. She would ask me, hey, do you have a calling? And I would say, hey, I'm praying about it. <laughs> and when, I, when we realized, you know, that God was calling us, sister, don't say, uh, he's, uh, my husband has a call. He has a calling. No, no, you are part of him. So just get, it that, get, get that, you know, in your mind. It is your calling too. I wasn't called to be a pastor's wife. Now you are. <laughs> if he is called. But when God called us to leave our career, we were in comfort. You were paying out our debt as soon as we as fast as we could, you know. In 2001, 2002, you know, between both of us, we we're probably making like 80, 80 85 thousand dollars. In 2001, 2002, we could have stayed there. But when we, 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 we said, you know what, we're going to follow the calling, when we became assistants back in 2006, that's it. Big old chunk of pay, you know, cut off. <laughs> but, hey, we're here. It's in God's timing. You know, there is a particular time God calls. You know, for, for Moses and the children of God, the time had come. Genesis 15, 13, God is telling Abraham, then he said to Abraham, Know certainly that your descendants will be strangers in a land that is not theirs, and will serve them, and they will afflict them for 400, afflict them 400 years. So God had told them, you know what, they're going to be in Egypt 400 years, and then I'm going to deliver him. And here, here was the deliverer, Moses. He was the, he, he was the one that God called them, the Israelites, when they were coming back to restore the temple after the captivity. Ezra chapter 1 verse 3, this is Cyrus telling them the decree. He's telling Ezra chapter 1 verse 3, who is among you of all his people? May his God be with him and let him go up to Jerusalem, which is in Judah, and build the house of the Lord God of Israel. He is God, which is in Jerusalem. For the Israelites, after the captivity, it was time for them to go and listen to me. It was voluntary. It was only those willing to go back, they did so. God, when he has a calling on your life, will get your attention somehow. It might be through difficult situations at home. Or your home is in shambles. Personal life is in shambles. Your marriage is broken. You don't have a marriage. You're not even married. <laughs> That's a different one. You're in a, fina you're, are in a financial mess. A, a financial mess that you got yourself into. In our text, God speaks to Moses by a burning bush. After 40 years of tending sheep in the desert, in the back of the desert, maybe he wanted to forget about God's calling. And maybe if I could say this, some here are in the back of the desert right now. Some of you are running from destiny. You are running from destiny. And you're try God is trying to get your attention this evening. He has tried to get your attention for a while already. Can he still move in, in your heart? Let's talk about secondly, few are chosen. In Matthew 22, at the beginning, there's a, par a parable of the wedding feast. And this parable basically is talking about the uh, Jesus is saying the kingdom of heaven is like this. And a king is inviting everyone to his feast. Amen. The Bible says that some made excuses while others mistreated the messengers and even killed some. Of course, this represents Israel and the, and the, and the prophets that God had sent to bring him back. And in Matthew twenty two fourteen, 14, the Bible says, For many are called, but few are chosen. Who are this, these few? These few are the available ones, the ones that are willing to respond. Amen. So we have to work in church. We have to work with what we have. You know, when we were working on this sermon a while back, 
Brother Eric said, you know, in church you have the core and then you have the decor. You know, decor, decorations, <laughs> they're just there looking pretty. Uh, fake flowers, right? They look pretty. I don't think they're real. They're not. You have the core and the decor. Very interesting. You know, the thing is, we as pastors, we can't get all frustrated. We can't get all worked up. Just work with what we have. Continue coming to church. If you're listening to God, amen, to the word of God, God is going to move into your heart. That's why we always ask you to come to church. There are many reasons, church, why people don't make themselves available. You know, in the parable of the wedding feast, they just wanted to do whatever, what, what, what they wanted to do. But there's all types of excuses, all kinds of colors, shapes, and sizes. You know, others, they don't want to step out of their comfort zone. Maybe for others, they, don't, they make excuses. Maybe it's lack of experience. Maybe it's lack of revelation of what God really wants for their life. Maybe some of them are fear of rejection. A lot of people battle with rejection. So when you want to do something for God, amen, you think about this rejection. No, they're going to tell me no. They're going to do this. They're going to, you know, make faces at me. While others put Jesus on hold and then answer other calls. Maybe riches. They answer the call of comfort. Maybe it's education. Maybe your family gets in the way. Others, it's just simply cowboys. Or your hobby, right? Or just fishing. I'm not throwing rocks or anything. You know, you go fishing, praise God, amen. Don't go fishing on Sundays, though. Or Wednesday nights. A man tells the story of his son, who was an insurance broker in Florida. And as they went deep sea fishing, he would always take his cell phone along on the boat. So one morning they were drifting about 10 miles offshore and Scott was discussing business on the phone. He was there on the phone, you know, the reels, the, the lines are out basically. And all of a sudden his rod got bent and the reel started screaming. Weed! A big fish has caught the bait. Scott was master of the situation. He said, pardon me, sir. He told his custom, customer calmly. I have a call on the other line. <laughs> Hanged up, amen. So what's pulling your line this evening? Is it God's will or is it your own ambitions? Because we can really, if we don't, if, you know, we can mix them up. In our text, Moses is coming up with all types of excuses. Verse 11, but Moses said to God, who am I? What shall I say to them? And then he comes up with another one. Suppose they will not believe me or listen to me, to my voice. So God tells him, okay, what do you have in your hand? It's a rod. Go throw it on the floor. It becomes a serpent. We know the story. He runs away from it. And then he tells Moses, okay, pick it up. He picks it up. Becomes a rod again. Okay, put your hand in your bosom. He puts his hand in there. Take it out. And the leprous. Put it back again. And he's seeing all these things. And then he tells them, you know what, and when I send you over there, if they don't believe those signs, I'm going to take uh, water and I'm going to uh, make it uh, turn into blood. He's sending them all these things. And then he says, oh, my Lord, I am not eloquent. But he said, oh, my Lord, I am not eloquent. Please send by the hand of whoever, whoever, whomever else you may send. So God is calling him. Moses, go back, do this. You have to do this. Go to my people. Go to the elders. God, you know, Pharaoh's not going to let you go, but I'm going to do miracles. He's going to let you go. And he's telling all these excuses. He's coming up with all these excuses. And at the end, he says, you know what? Send someone else, God. Send someone else who wants to go. Moses doesn't want to go anymore. The classic 
Here I am, because remember verse 4, he said, here I am, Lord. The classic here I am, send them. That, that's, that's where it came from. Exodus chapter 3. Happens all the time. That once the person finds out God's will for his life, you will come up with all types of excuses. But listen to me. This is a conversation between you and God. I'm not here to judge you. I'm not here to, ah, pastor, you can't tell me. I'm not telling you anything. This is between you and God and the sheep for Moses and the sheep that were listening. But here, it's just between you and God. And there are those who are wait, uh, waiting for the right time or circumstances to follow God's lead. We have this in Luke chapter, uh, chapter 9. Verse 57, if we're going to go there real quick, read it real quick, amen, the word of God. Luke 9, now it happened as they journeyed on the road that someone said to him, Lord, I will follow you whenever, uh, wherever you go. And Jesus said to him, foxes have holes and birds of the air have nests, but the son of man has nowhere to lay his head. Then he said to another, follow me. But he said, Lord, let me first go and bury my father. Jesus told them, let the dead bury their dead, but you go on and preach the kingdom of God. And another also said, Lord, I will follow you, but let me first go and bid them farewell who are at my house. But Jesus said to him, no one having put his hand to the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom of God. And here we have two men that come to Jesus. Jesus, I'll follow you, but at my convenience. He told one, okay, follow me. And he said, no, I can't, not, not right now. I have to do some other things first. In other words, on their own terms, they wanted to follow Jesus. When I have time, Jesus, you are not my first priority. And people doing this, they pull themselves out of the will of God. Many are called, few are chosen. We need men. We need couples. We need the church to be true to its calling and rise up, raise up and stand in the gap between now and the rapture. It's going to happen. Amen. I, I feel like, yeah, yeah, I mean, I'm crying up here, right, and stuff like that, I'm getting all emotional and stuff like that. And you know me, I don't get emotional. Not that much, amen. Not in front of you yet. <laughs> That's right. So we need men, listen, to stand in the gap. Isaiah 6, 8. Also I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send and who will go for us? Then I said, Here I am, send me. Isaiah said, Send me. There was one man. The nation was full of idolatry when Isaiah was ministering, basically. And he's saying, you know what, I'm going to go. Ezekiel 22, 30. So I sought for a man among them who would make a wall and stand in the gap before me on behalf of the land that I should not destroy it, but I found no one. That's crazy and that is scary. Where God will not find a man to go out into this crazy world and say, you know what, I'm going to stand in the gap. I'm going to preach the word of God. In our text, Moses was alone in the desert. God got his attention. God got his attention. And when it comes to us, God has, some of you, God has tried to get your attention for a while. You're fighting against God. You're kicking against the goads. Haggai, chapter 1, verse 6. You have sown much and bring in little. You eat, but you do not have enough. You drink, but, but you are not filled with drink. You clothe yourselves, but no one is warm. And he who earns wages, earns wages to put in a bag with holes. Verse 9, you looked for much, but indeed it came too little. And when you brought it home, I blew, I blew it away. This is God speaking. 
I blew it away. Why, says the Lord of hosts, because of my house that is in ruins, while every one of you runs to his own house. Verse 11, for I called for a drought on the land and the mountains. And this is God trying to get a, a hold of his people, a hold of the nation. You know, they, were, they had neglected the house of God. They were supposed to be rebuilding. And God hits the finances. Maybe, I'm, not, I'm just throwing this out, maybe you're going through financial issues because you have neglected God. You have made a God out of money. Let's talk about, lastly, a response, or the, resp the response. You know, going back to Marmaduke's dad, he was a volunteer firefighter. He had to respond to the calling. There was cru crucial moments and the same with us. Our response to the calling, whatever it may be, has implications. Lives are on the line. We know the story of Jonah. Very, uh, every, the little kids, they know it. Amen. God calls no, uh, Jonah, Jonah, go to Nineveh, do this, preach the word. I'm going to destroy him if you don't warn them. And no, no, uh, Jonah, what does he do? He goes the other way. Kill them, Lord. I don't want to go there. But lives, 120,000 Lives, they were on the line. And Jonah at the beginning said, no, I'm not going to go. But God got a hold of him. Moses, in our text, he was going to deliver a nation, and he comes up with all these excuses. I can't do it. I can't talk. I st 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 stutter. I do this. I, you know, you can talk about Jesus. If this is your will, of course, he was going to die already for us. Let your will be done, not mine. Peter, same thing. Paul, the disciples, you know, prophets of old had a specific calling to go into the nations and proclaim what God told them to. And that calling is still the same. I remember long, uh, when we were in Bolivia, uh, about, uh, there was another missionary that, that got there, amen, to replace another pastor. And this missionary said, you know what, he's not in the fellowship anymore, but uh, this missionary came and said, you know what, I never had a calling to be a missionary. And smoke started coming out of my ears, and that's a lot of smoke. <laughs> so smoke was coming out because it, it made a short circuit. I'm like, not called to be a missionary. I mean, you're called to be a pastor, right, but just in the States. So that's why I short-circuited, right? Just in the States. Matthew 28, 19, the Bible says, Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations. All the nations. All, that means the whole world. Acts 1, 8. But you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem, that's the city of Jerusalem, and in all Judea, that, that was the southern kingdom, and Samaria, the rest of uh, Israel, and to the end of the earth. All the nations. So if you're thinking, I don't have a calling to be a missionary, that sounds very noble. Very noble. Oh, I'm not I'm called to the nations like you, Pastor. I haven't even pioneered in the States. I was wanting to go pioneer in the States. Go to some central Texas town, buy a little ranchette, <laughs> get some guns, kill some hogs and deer. Shoot the breeze, preach. But no, the calling is for the nations. And I, I couldn't, uh, I mean, I love you and everything, amen, but my calling is to go out. Amen. It, it is to go out, amen. I, I'm going to miss you a lot. I, I enjoyed fellowshipping with you. I enjoyed serving you as best I could, amen. I wish we could have done more. But it is what it is, like my brother Ruben says. When God calls you, you will not be content with doing anything else. You will be restless, especially if your call is to preach. And I'm not talking about emotion here. Anyone can get all hyped up and jump into the bandwagon. I'm talking about a genuine call to preach. And this call, God gives it to you. I'm not going to call anybody. 
I'm not going to tell someone, you know what, you, you look like a, you could be a pastor. No, you're going to get in trouble, right? Quickly with God, do that. I, I'm not going to do that. I ask guys, <laughs> I ask, are you sure you're called? I, I ask them, are you sure you're called? You better pray to <laughs> make sure. Why do I say that? Not to discourage them or anything. You're dealing with souls. And that's, that's, that's heavy. You're dealing with souls of men and women that are going to, because of your words, because of the, your example, they're going to either make it to heaven or they're going to say, you know what, I'm not going to do that. Make sure God is calling you. This is something between you and God. Maybe you, maybe you feel called, but maybe you disqualify yourself. You're in debt. You know, your children are out of control. Family is out of control. Your bad testimony, maybe, I don't know. Your hit and miss, meaning that you're not faithful, unreliable. We need you in church. Maybe you're too, too young in the faith. New converts. 1 Timothy, Timothy 3.10, but let, but let these also first be tested, then let them serve. You know, it is through this process that most will realize if they are called or not when you are serving genuinely. You know what I want to call? I have a calling to do, to work with people, all that stuff. Praise God, amen. But as you start dealing with people, working with people, amen, you're going you're gonna to know if, if you really want to do this. Amen. And li listen to me, I wouldn't change it for anything. Amen. I know what I'm getting into with well, eyes wide open. <laughs> you know, this is just some advice for those that are courting. Okay, those that are going to court, like in the near future, like quickly, like quick, like after the service, you start courting. Amen. A word of advice to you, amen. You know, if you start talking to someone and you have a calling, brother or sister, I mean, sister to be a pastor's wife, not to preach, right, sister? But brother, if you have a calling to preach, and then in the courting process, they tell you, you know what, I don't want to be a pastor's wife or whatever. Okay, if you have a calling, you better not change your stance. Oh, I think I, I'll change. I never really wanted to be a pastor. A pastor. Don't do that, amen. You know, I, I thank God for my wife. Our son, he just has to go with us. It doesn't matter. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> but I thank God for my wife, Jessica. That did, when God calls, she's like, okay, let's go. Let's go. Hugo, when he's 18, he's going to marry someone. Okay, little sisters. He's going to marry someone, and he wants to go to Africa. So you want to travel the world? Here's Hugo, okay? <laughs> Five more years, and he can get married. At 17, we'll let him go. Sign papers, amen. <laughs> Will you change your stance? <laughs> if God doesn't back down from his promises, why should we? Isaiah 58, 9. Then you shall call and the Lord will answer. You shall cry and he will say, here, here I am. Moses, here I am, Lord. But then God told him, blah, 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 blah. Uh, send someone else. God doesn't change. Jeremiah 29, 12, one of my favorite verses. Then you will call upon me and go and pray to me and I will listen to you. And you will seek me and find me. When you search for me with all your heart, I will be found by you, says the Lord. Romans 11.29, I'm, I'm about to finish. Don't, worry, don't fall asleep on me. <laughs> Romans 11.29, for the gifts and the calling of God are irrevocable. Now this call is like no other. It's perpetual to be, in, this is in reference to Christianity in general. It's not like, like when you enlist in the regular army where you go sign up for, for several years and then you are done with your obligation, it's more like constant re-enlistment. 
concert. You know, you finish your tour, and then you go again. And then you finish those three years, and you go again. You finish five years, you go again. Constant, constant, always on the move. I so admire these old preachers from our fellowship. Pastor Gooding, we just had him here. Pastor uh, Campbell, Pastor uh, Jim Peña from their Kingsville. Pastor Gary Case, one of the older ones you might not know him. Pastor Tom Payne. Pastor Mitchell, I think he was 80 when he responded once to go back again to Australia. You wouldn't get me on a plane to go 18 hours on a plane. Pastor Mitchell would be like, oh, like an hour to where I don't know what he did. Constantly on the move. I don't think or I ever believe that they came to a point in life where they said, I think I'll settle down. If you have a calling of God, brother, you shouldn't be settling, settling down. You should be getting things ready to go. Conference is less than probably six months ago, six months from now. You should be getting ready. You know what? What am I going to do? I need to get my finances ready. I need to get my marriage ready. I need to get things ready, amen, because men are going to be needed. Couples are going to be needed. Christianity is forever. And who said we had to settle down? But like anything, no one can force you. Right? It's voluntary. Colossians, and I finish with this. Colossians 3.15. And let the peace of God rule in your hearts. Very interesting word, rule. To which also you were called in one body and be thankful. The commentary uh, Barnes says, in reference to this word, rule. The Greek word is brabeuto, but brabeuteo, whatever, brabeuto. So what it means is to preside, rule is to preside in your hearts, to sit as umpire there, to govern and control you, the word rule. The peace of God rule in your hearts to control you. Now we know what an umpire an umpire is and what he does. In baseball, he decides what pitch is a strike and which is a ball. Another um, umpire watches the bases and declares the runner safe or out. Most of the time, his job is fairly easy because the right call is obvious. But sometimes it's awfully close, but he has to make the call quickly. He can't say, let me get back to you, or I need to sleep on it. He, an empire can't do that. He has to decide right there and then. In the same way, there are times when people say or do things to us or around us, and we have to respond in some way. In those situations, Paul is saying, let Christ make the call. If he lives in here. Let him rule. That's what the, the scripture says. Let, and the, let the peace of God rule in your hearts. If Jesus lives in your heart, he is the umpire. He has control of your life. And what God is calling you to do whatever, amen. Some of you he's calling to repentance. Let him rule. Some of you, he's calling you to other nations. Let him rule. Some of you, he's calling you to get into the ministry. Whatever type of ministry, let him rule and control your life. The song we sang right now, the Spanish one, the new one, En Totalidad. Toma mi vida en tus manos. Take my life in your hands. It is yours. Just like the potter shaping the clay in the potter's hand, in the potter's wheel. That's what he wants to do with us. And we said, beautiful song, beautiful song, do you mean it? No, pastor, it's just beautiful, that's it. Do you mean it? Take my life. More than, and it is very hard to trust God. You know, it's, it is hard for me it's a lot of times to trust God, amen. But you have to take that step of faith and say, you know what, take my life, God. You're in control can't do anything about this. You call me to this, we're going to do it. Amen. I don't know how you're going to do it, but we're going to do it. God's going to help us.
Amen. The call. Let's uh, bow our, our heads this morning, this evening, church. Every head bowed, every eye closed. In reverence to God. Speaking about the call, amen. Right now, God is calling, knocking at the door of the hearts of some of you in this, in this place. You are here. You, uh, somebody invited you once again. God loves you. He is knocking at the door of your heart. If you would just open up, amen, he would come in. He would help you. Give you a better life. You're not saved. You backslid maybe. You said, you know what? This doesn't work. God loves you. He, it does work. We are the ones that rebel. We are the ones that say, you know what? This is not going to work. I don't want this anymore. I don't want to walk with God anymore. Forget about the calling. And when I say calling, I'm not just talking about calling excuse me, calling to preach. I'm not calling just, I'm not talking just about that. I'm talking about God is calling you to repentance. God is calling, if you're not doing anything for God, God is calling you to do something for Him. Connect yourself in the, in the body. If that is you, amen, you want to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. You're not saved, you're backslidden. If that is you, I want you to do, do me a big favor. We want to count it a privilege to pray with you tonight. Just raise your hand. Say, you know what, Pastor? Here's my hand. I need God in my life. That is you. Just raise your hand. God loves you. He wants the best for you, amen. With every head bowed, every, every eye closed. If you want to receive Christ as your Lord and Savior, just raise your hand. Say, Pastor, here's my hand. I need Jesus. I need prayer. Don't be afraid. We're not going to put you to the mic. I just want you to make heaven your home. Anybody here? Front to back, left to right. You're not saved. You're back. Amen. You want to receive Christ as your Lord and Savior. Just raise your hand. God loves you. Anybody here? You want to receive Christ? Amen. Changing the order of the service then. You know, church, God is, is about to call his church in the rapture. He wants for us to have a better life. He wants for us, amen, to make it. That's, got, that's going to depend on you. God wants the best for us this evening, church. Make sure you respond to the call, the tugging of the Holy Spirit in your heart, amen. Whatever it is, you have to make these things. You have to come to an agreement with God because he wants the best for you, amen. We're going to stand to our feet. These altars are open. God spoke to your heart, amen. Come to this altar. Talk to him, amen. If you see a visitor around you, amen, go tell him about the love of God and, and deal with him gently. Try to bring him to a decision, amen. As you come to this altar, we're going to sing this song. Brother, I'll give it. Here I am waiting. Thank you, Jesus. I'm grateful in church, my God. I thank you for your grace, your mercy. Your privilege, my God, you gave us to minister to your saints. Here I am longing. Thank you, my God. For you, Hide me so in your love. Your love yes. And bring to revive, me God, that fire to in the hearts of you. To preach those that you have called to preach, that you revive that fire in their hearts, my May God. May I know Jesus, Jesus you the of your people. More Thank you, we magnify you this evening. <coughs> Here I am waiting. Abide in me. Come. Um. 
God praise in this altar church. Let's magnify his name. Shikara la basondo korobo. Sira la basondo korobo. Sikara la basendere. Sira la basondo korobo. Sikara la basendere. Shikara la basendere. Magnify your name, Jesus. Amen. Once again, church, thank you for letting me help in what I could. And uh, Pastor, thank you for the opportunity. And, and we didn't communicate a lot, amen, but I did learn a lot from him, amen, and, and uh, whenever I knew, I thought I knew what I was doing, I made a lot of mistakes, <laughs> and I thank God for Pastor, because he was, I learned a lot of grace, grace, a lot of grace, amen, thank God for that, if not, it would have been dead like two and a half years ago, <laughs> but that's fine, amen, God, God, uh, God's going to help us, amen, and pray for us in Bolivia. And uh, as you give, give God praise as Pastor comes, amen. 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 You guys can go back to your seat. If I could have Jessica and Hugo come so that we can pray for them. And uh, as we release them back, you know, uh, what a powerful uh, thing that he said. I, I, I hadn't really considered that. But uh, the fact that he's never pioneered in the States, you can come up, sis. Amen. Hugo, you guys can stand over here. I can have uh, Beto and uh, Pastor Vasquez come up and help me help me pray tonight for them. We're going to believe God for them. Amen. Uh, but what a powerful, uh, you know, observation. Just the fact that uh, he's the only place he's ever pastored other than being assistant here is overseas and so that's really really powerful amen god has uh definitely uh, blessed us these last three years how many uh are you are gonna miss them amen, <laughs> amen. Glory. we are we are going to pray for them and then remember immediately after service there is cake and punch you can take pictures I do love what he said. If you look at their lives, you know that they are one, right? They're one. His family is one. And, uh, you know, you can easily look at them and, uh, and, and know that the impact that they have is because they are one. Uh, you know, they're always together. Uh, you know, they're always ministering. And that's extremely extremely valuable amen in the ministry and so we're going to pray help us pray church why don't you stand to your feet just extend your hands and help us pray we'll start with ugo amen and then we're going to believe god let's pray father we thank you for ugo god and all that you are doing god in his life right now in this season in this time i'm asking you lord to minister and use them, God, for your glory, God. I pray, God, that this time in Bolivia is going to be lasting, God. The Lord in his life, um, my God, I'm praying, God, the Lord that he would uh, tap into, God. I pray the giftings, uh, God, that you have placed on his life and that he would use them for your glory, God. I'm so grateful 
for all that you use them for here in our church. Let them be a blessing to that church in Kota Kota. And God, I pray to his parents. God, thank you, Lord. I pray for Sister Jessica. God, thank you for my sister, God, her willingness um, to serve, God, the Lord. Yes, her family to be a blessing to our church. Um, Lord, thank you so much for her exampleship, God. The Lord, thank you, my God. Give her wisdom, God. The Lord, I pray, God, um, give her peace, God. Uh, Lord, I pray that every day that she is there in Bolivia, she will feel safe, God, um, Lord, and covered by your precious blood and your destiny, God, upon her life. Thank you for everything that you are using her for, Lord. Thank you for my brother. God, I pray for Victor, God. Um, I pray, God, the Lord, a special anointing upon his life would continue, God. Um, God, I pray, give him, I pray, a mantle, God, of discipleship, God, to raise up, um, Lord, sons and daughters, God. Uh, Lord, give him wisdom, God, in his counsel, God, um, in his pastoring, uh, as a husband, God, as a father, God. The uh, Lord, uh, yes, God, I pray, God, uh, let this be a turning point in his life, God. Uh, Lord, will you see the evidence, God, um, Lord, of leadership in his life, God. Thank you for my brother. Anoint him, God, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Yes, amen. You can give the Lord a clap offering. I, you know, I always pray for a verse, you know, for, uh, you know, couples that are leaving, especially staff. And, man, God just quickened to my heart, 1 Samuel 18, 14. It talks about David. That everywhere he went, he behaved him so wisely. In all his ways, the Bible says, and the Lord was with him. And, uh, you know, I thought about that verse, uh, Victor, because it's, you know, it, it's very evident why God's hand is on y'all's life. You guys, you know, you, you think about David. He had no idea. He was just being David. That's the way he loved God. He wasn't doing anything special, you know. Uh, but he had no idea that he was on the verge of destiny. And, uh, and, and, you know, you do what you do, all of you as a family. You're not trying to do anything special or outdo anybody. That's just who y'all are. And you have no idea, man. I just really felt you guys are about to step into a whole new destiny in y'all's life. And God's going to give you. There's, there's things that you put aside that you don't talk about a whole lot. Uh, desires and dreams. And, uh, and they don't have anything to do with material things. They're spiritual. Like sons and daughters and churches and church planting. And you, you want that you know, that element of pastoring. And, uh, and, and that's exactly what God's doing. Everything that you've done up until this point, that's what God has been preparing you for uh, as a family. And so uh, we just want to say thank you again. And we love you guys. And thank you so much for giving yourselves for these past three years. Amen. Hallelujah. Man, you know, um, they have been an incredible blessing. They came in just a few months after we, we opened here. And then we went straight into a pandemic. And so they, they have uh, just helped us settle in this building, set things in motion. And so we're going to keep praying for them. We're going to believe God for them. And uh, amen. We're going to dismiss. There's cake. There's punch. Keep it in the concert hall, please. Say your goodbyes. Take your pictures. Um, heads are bowed. Eyes are closed. Brother Tony, will you dismiss us? Amen. God bless you. Remember, we're going to say our goodbyes in the concert hall. Amen. God bless you.